Hi, my name is Ana Acunto from the University of Texas at Austin. In this video, I will model and demonstrate how to complete the MathFact flashcard activity, which is the first activity in the Pirate Math Equation Quest Individual Intervention for Total Difference and Change Schemas. The focus of this video is MathFact flashcards for the individual intervention. In the individual intervention, the teacher works individually or one-on-one -on -one with the student throughout each lesson. MathFact flashcards is the first activity in the individual intervention. Each lesson has five components. MathFact flashcards, equation quest, buccaneer problems, ship, ship shape sorting, and Jolly Roger review. Today, I'll demonstrate how to complete MathFact flashcards. For the MathFact flashcards activity, you will need the following five materials. The counting up addition and subtraction poster, a timer, addition and subtraction MathFact flashcards, the MathFact flashcard graph, and a colored pencil or crayon. At this point, you may be asking yourself, which flashcards should I use? That's a great question. For the individual intervention, I use single-digit addition and subtraction flashcards. On the left, we have an example of the single-digit addition flashcard, and on the right, we have an example of a single-digit subtraction flashcard. Addition and subtraction flashcards are used together throughout the program to ensure students receive a combination of addition and subtraction flashcards throughout each lesson. For students who may struggle, you can always start with addition flashcards, and as they become fluent with their addition facts, you can add in subtraction flashcards. Anytime you complete the math fact flashcard activity, you follow the same five steps as seen above. For step one, complete the first trial, whoops, step one, complete the first trial of flashcards with the student for one minute. During the first trial, the student answers as many flashcards correctly as he or she can in one minute. For step two, count the number of, of correct flashcards from trial one. For step three, complete a second trial of flashcards with the student for one minute. During that second trial, the student answers as many flashcards correctly as he or she can in one minute. The teacher encourages the student to beat his or her score from the first trial. For step four, count the fl correct flashcards from trial two. And finally, for step five, the student graphs the highest score from the two trials. Before the activity begins, make sure you have your counting up addition and subtraction poster, which we see here. Um, we display this so that students can use the poster to help them answer fa flashcard facts if they need it. The picture of the counting up poster is shown here to remind us to display the poster before the activity. Step one says, one minute timing. The teacher begins by setting the timer for one minute. When the timer is set, the teacher says go. Once the timer starts, the student answers as many flashcards as he or she can until the timer beeps. During the first trial, the teacher holds up one flashcard at a time and allows the student to answer. If the student answers the flashcard correctly, the teacher puts the flashcard in the correct discard pile. If the student answers the flashcard incorrectly, the teacher instructs the student to use the counting up strategies and continues to assist the student until he or she arrives at the correct answer. Then the teacher places the flashcard in the correct discard pile. At the end of the one minute timing, the teacher says stop. If the student is struggling to answer a question, the teacher can direct the student to the counting up poster and remind him or her to use his or her counting up strategies. If you are not familiar with how to use the counting up strategies for addition and subtraction, you can view the video entitled Counting Up Addition and Subtraction, which is linked in the description. Step two says count flashcards. In step two, the teacher and the student count the number of correct flashcards in the correct discard pile. You can allow the student to count the flashcards with you to provide an additional opportunity to practice counting skills. The teacher then tells the student that he or she answered flash so many flashcards correctly. For example, if you counted five flashcards, the student, you would tell the student that you've answered five flashcards correctly. And then the teacher asks the student if he or she thinks that he or she can beat the score in the next round or the second trial. Step three says one minute timing. The second trial follows the same procedure as step one. The teacher begins by setting the timer for one minute. When the timer is set, the teacher says go. 
Once the timer starts, the student answers as many flashcards correctly as he or she can until the timer beeps. During the second trial, the teacher holds up one flashcard at a time and allows the student to answer. If the student answers the flashcard correctly, the teacher puts the flashcard in the correct discard pile on the right. If the student answers the flashcard incorrectly, the teacher instructs the student to use the counting up strategies and continues to assist, assist the student until he or she arrives at the correct answer. Then the teacher places the flashcard in the correct discard pile. At the end of the second one minute timing, the teacher says stop. If the student is struggling to answer a question, the teacher can direct the student to the poster seen here to remind him or her to use the counting up strategies. If you're, again, if you're not familiar with counting up strategies, you can see our video linked in the description. Step four says count flashcards. In step four, the teacher follows the same procedure as in step two. The teacher and student count the number of correct flashcards in the correct discard pile. You can allow the student to count the cards with you to provide an additional opportunity to practice counting up skills. The teacher then tells the student that he or she answered so many flashcards correctly, and the teacher and the student determines the, determine the highest score for the day. Step five says graph the highest score. The student graphs the highest score from the two trials by coloring the number of boxes to represent their highest score on the graph. For example, if a student answered 10 flashcards correctly in the first trial and eight flashcards correctly in the second trial, the student graphs a higher score of 10 on the graph by coloring 10 boxes. So for example, the student would graph, would color in those boxes from zero until 10. The graphing component allows the students to self-monitor his or her progress throughout the lessons and helps the student to practice shading a graph. The graphing is always the student's favorite part of this activity. Each student loves trying to beat his or her high score. Students are really excited when they improve and can visually see their progress on the graph. Um, now that I've talked about the five steps of the Math Fact flashcard activity, let's watch an example of a teacher implementing the activity with a student. Before you watch the video, pay close attention to the following. The teacher displays the counting up addition and subtraction poster for the student to reference. The teacher sets the timer for one minute and shows the student one flashcard at a time. The teacher prompts the student to use the counting up strategies if she does not know an answer. The teacher encourages the student to count the cards and the teacher encourages the student to beat her previous score of blank in the second trial. And finally, the teacher and the student graph the highest score. All right, let's get started with our math patch flashcards. Each card is going to have either an addition or subtraction column. Your job is to look at the column and add it as quickly as you can. So we have a minute to answer the minute cards. Okay. And four, two. Again, remember this time um, in round two, your goal is to try to get your score from round one. This time you want to get more than 60 cards correct. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. All right, you're going to have a minute to try to beat your score of 60. Oh, yeah. 
Your goal is to try to get more than 16 cards per card. Okay, so you can count with three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. You totally beat your score. Nice. Twenty-two is your highest score for today, so that's what we are going to grab. Good job. All right. Give you a couple of seconds to color in your graph, and while you do that, I'm gonna give, go ahead and give you a treasure coin because it's super awesome at beating your score this second time around. Good job, Isaiah. Way to start off strong. So in this video, I demonstrated how to implement our Math Fact flashcard activity with the Pirate Math Equation Quest Individual Intervention with Total Difference and Change Schemas. For more information on how to use the Counting Up Addition and Subtraction strategy, you can click on the link in the description below. I would like to recognize IES, the University of Texas at Austin, and the Meadows Center for Preventing Educational Risk. Without their support, this research would not have been possible. Thank you.